So in previous videos, uh, we've been solving first order linear differential equations using an integrating factor. We're going to look at an application problem or a mixing problem in this case that can be solved using that technique. So it says a tank contains 50 gallons of a solution that has 90% water and 10% alcohol. A second solution that's 50% water and 50% alcohol is added to the tank at a rate of four gallons per minute. It says the solution, as the solution is being added, the tank is being drained and it's being drained at a, a rate of five gallons of solution per minute. Assuming the tank is well mixed, how much alcohol is in the tank after 10 minutes? So if I just kind of draw a quick picture of what's going on, I have a tank. That tank starts out with 50 gallons of solution in it and then we're piping solution into the tank and it's piping into the tank at a rate of uh, four gallons per minute so that's four gallons of solution per minute and th the uh, solution that's being piped in is 50 percent alcohol and then at the same time we're draining the tank so we're piping solution out of the tank at a rate of five gallons per minute. And then the they're asking us how much alcohol is in the tank after 10 minutes. So I'm gonna let big A represent gallons of alcohol in the tank. And we're being asked to find A of 10. How many gallons of alcohol are in the tank after 10 minutes? So the problem is we need a function uh, that models the amount of alcohol in the tank at any given time. But the issue is, is we're not being given information about the, the amount of alcohol in the tank. We're being given information about the speed at which alcohol in the solution is entering the tank and the speed at which alcohol or the solution is exiting the tank. If if the solution is part alcohol and they know how fast the solution is coming in and the concentration of the solution, I can figure out how fast pure alcohol is coming into the tank. So I've got some pieces of information here that are important. I start off with 50 gallons of uh, solution in the tank, but that 50 gallons is 90% water and 10% alcohol. So that tells me the alcohol in the tank at time zero, A of zero, is equal to the 50 gallons of solution times uh, times a tenth. A ten, it's 10% 10 alcohol, so the 50 gallons of solution needs to be multiplied by one tenth, which means five gallons of alcohol, pure alcohol, are in the tank. It's probably a water alcohol solution of some sort, but if it's 10% alcohol, then 10% of those 50 gallons, or a tenth, 10% is 10 over 100 or a tenth. A tenth of those 50 gallons is just pure alcohol. So we actually have an initial value problem. We're being told that at zero minutes, we have five gallons of alcohol, which means if we can come up with a model for alcohol that involves a constant of integration, we'll be able to find the particular solution that corresponds to these initial conditions right here. So we have information about the rate of change. So the idea is is that if A is the number of alcohol, uh, if A is the number of gallons of alcohol in the tank, then A prime is the rate of change of the number of gallons of alcohol in the tank. And the derivative A prime should be the sum of two things in this case. We have alcohol coming in. So if we knew the rate of change of alcohol coming into the tank, we would add that to the rate of change of alcohol exiting the tank, so A prime out, and the sum of the rates should give us the total rate uh, for the rate of change of alcohol in the tank as a function of time. So our first job is to figure out what A prime in is and A prime out. A prime in is easy. We have four gallons per minute of solution entering the tank but the solution is 50% alcohol, which means two of those four gallons is, two, is pure alcohol. So we actually have two gallons of pure alcohol entering the tank per minute. So two gallons 
alcohol per minute. That's the rate in, just based off of 50% solution, uh, alcohol solution coming in at four gallons per minute. So that means half of that solution is pure alcohol. So my derivative A prime is going to equal two, two gallons per minute in, plus whatever the rate is going out. And the rate going out is going to be a little bit trickier. So the first thing that I, before we try to do A prime out, let's, let's talk about the fraction of the solution that is alcohol as a function of time. So if A represents, if A of T represents the number of gallons of alcohol in the tank, if I want to know the fraction of the tank that is pure alcohol, I would take the, the gallons of alcohol and divide it by the total solution. Right. Alcohol, gallons of alcohol divided by gallons of solution will be the fraction of the tank that, can, that is just pure alcohol. So I can get a model for that actually because the solution in the tank as a function of time is just going to be the 50 gallons you start with and then what we want to notice is that we're actually losing uh, we're losing solution because if four gallons is coming in and five gallons is exiting then if s is the solution the rate of change of the solution is four minus five is negative one gallon per minute we're losing a gallon every per every minute so what we would do is take the the rate at which we're losing solution and multiply it by time it's a constant rate so solution is just going to equal s prime times time right amount equals rate times time if the rate is constant here i have a constant rate so negative one times t minutes is just negative t so the amount of solution in the tank as a function of time is going to be the 50 gallons we start with minus t because we're losing one gallon per minute. So it's going to be minus, if, I, if t is two minutes, it's going to be 50 minus two is 48 gallons of solution left in the tank. So a divided by 50 minus t is the fraction of the tank that's just pure alcohol. And I can drop the of t uh, notation if I want to. This is fraction of tank that is alcohol. So now I can come up with my A out and here's here's the way that we do it. A prime out. So solution is leaving the tank at five gallons per minute. So I know the rate out is negative five. Negative five gallons per minute. But what fraction of that five gallons is alcohol? Well, that's going to be this fraction right here. A gallons of alcohol divided by gallons of solution is the fraction of this five that is just pure alcohol. So we multiply negative five times A over 50 minus T, 50 minus T and that's going to be the rate out. So I can see that the rate out is I'm gonna, because it's negative, I'm, I'm going to wind up with a minus here, and it's going to be minus 5 over the 50 minus t times a. And I'm going to get this out of my way. So the key is, the key concept is find the fraction of the uh, concentrate in the tank that you're interested in. In this case, I'm interested in alcohol what fraction of the solution is alcohol and then multiply that by the speed at which the solution is exiting to get the rate of alcohol exiting the tank. And if I add this term to both sides, I'm going to wind up with the differential equation looks like this, A prime plus five over 50 minus T times A equaling two. That's by adding this term to both sides. And so I want to do is look at this. And in the previous videos that we've been working on, we've been solving first order linear differential equations that we manipulate into the form y prime plus p of t y equals q of t. And what we want to recognize is that this is a differential equation of this form. So the technique that we use to solve this form, not p of t, we've been doing p of x. I don't know what is going on in my brain. 
we've been doing differential equations of the form y prime plus p of xy equals q of x. But what we want to recognize is that this differential equation is of the same form because instead of using the variable y, we're using the variable a. So y prime is a prime and y is just a. And instead of letting x be our input variable, we're just letting t be our input variable. So I have an equation of the form a prime plus p of t a equals q of t. I'm going to be able to use an integrating factor. My, I have p of t as the coefficient on the a, and my integrating factor is just going to be u equals e to the antiderivative not of p of x, but of p of t dt. So we're going to be able to solve this using the same technique that, we, uh, that, we, that we've been using for first order linear differential equations. So I'm gonna move forward a slide to give myself some room. So uh, we had a prime, sorry, we had a prime plus, it was, my brain's not working well, five over 50 minus t times a equaling two. Here's our differential equation, our p of t is equal to the 5 over 50 minus t. Our integrating factor is going to be u equal to e to the antiderivative of 5 over 50 minus t, any antiderivative of that. So we pick the easiest one. Integrating 5 over 50 minus t, we're going to get e to the negative 5 times the natural log of 50 minus t, and we could verify this by differentiating it. We'd get uh, derivative of natural log is one over the crap times the derivative of the crap, so it'd be negative one times negative five is positive five, so we get that back. And then we wanna use log properties. We can take this negative five and move it up into the exponent position on the 50 minus t. And then we have e to the natural log, which and those are inverse functions. So they cancel and, and they leave us with just 50 minus t to the negative five as our integrating factor. So we're gonna take this equation here and multiply both sides by the integrating factor. So we multiply by 50 minus t to the negative fifth power, 50 minus t to the negative fifth power. And if we distribute that in, which we, we really don't need to do, but we could, we would get 50 minus t to the negative fifth power times the a prime plus five times, we have a 50 minus t in the denominator, so that's the same as a 50 minus t to the negative first. When we multiply 50 minus t to the negative first times 50 minus t to the negative, uh, to the negative first, we're gonna get 50 minus t to the negative sixth times the a, equaling two times 50 minus t to the negative fifth. And if we did it right, the sum of these two terms right here should just be, take the product of the integrating factor times a, take its derivative, and we should get the previous line back. This right here times a prime by the product rule plus a times the derivative of this. The derivative of this, the negative five would come down. Uh, we would uh, subtract one from the exponent to get the negative six, then take the derivative of the inside, which would be negative one, which would get multiplied by the negative five to give the plus five, so it checks. So that's how we can always check in this step. Take this derivative, make sure we get this line back. And so we have that and two times 50 minus t to the negative five. And once we have this, we do exactly what we've been doing. We take the antiderivative of both sides, we anti-differentiate the derivative. Whatever we, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. Integrate the derivative, we get the stuff back. So we just get the 50 minus t to the negative fifth times the a equaling take the antiderivative of this. So our guess would be to make this exponent one bigger, 50 minus t to the negative four, and plus a constant of integration, which I probably should have added on on that line. 
so minus the four. And then we need to figure out what needs to go here so that when we take the derivative of this, we get a two right here. Well, this negative four is going to come down. So I can see that I'll need to divide, uh, multiply by a half. Negative four times a half is negative two. But when I take the derivative using the chains, chain rule of the inside function, I'll get a negative one canceling the negative that comes from the negative four. So a one half is sufficient here. And then to solve it for a, we're just gonna multiply both sides by 50 minus t. This is a negative five, so multiply by positive five. The same base means add the exponents, five plus negative five is zero. 50 minus t to the zero is one. One times a is just a. And then multiply everything on this side by the same thing, 50 minus t to the fifth power. When we distribute this into here, we're gonna get 50 minus t to the fifth times 50 minus t to the negative fourth. Negative four plus five is one. We're just going to get a half of 50 minus t to the positive first power plus c times 50 minus t to the fifth power. So we have the general solution, but now we need the particular solution that corresponds to our initial conditions. And our initial conditions were, that we calculated on the previous slide, were that at the zero minute mark, we had five gallons of alcohol in the tank. So we need to plug in zero for time and five for A. So we put a five here, one half times 50 minus zero is just 50, plus C times 50 minus zero is just 50 to the fifth, a half of 50 is going to give us a 25. We would subtract that 25 from both sides, which will give us a negative 20 over here on the left-hand side, and then divide both sides by uh, 50 to the fifth power to get the C by itself. So there's our constant of integration, and then we go to our original equation right here, and we're gonna plug that constant of integration in. So the plus C becomes minus 20 over 50 to the fifth power. And I usually would keep pulling my work down the page, but because I'm in a PowerPoint setting, I know that I'm going to run out of space. So we solve for that constant of integration. I'll tuck it over here. We got C equals negative 20 over 50 to the fifth. And now we finally have our model for the amount of alcohol in the tank as a function of time. And we were asked to find how much alcohol is in the tank after 10 minutes. And that's just a matter of calculating a to the 10th power. Sorry, a of 10, not 10th power. I don't, all right, it's time for a break. It's probably beer 30 or something like that equals. So now we just plug 10 minutes in. So we're going to get a half of 50 minus 10 is 40, so we're gonna get a half of 40 is just 20, so we get 20 gallons sitting right here, minus, we have 20 over 50 to the fifth power times, 50 minus 10 is 40, we're gonna get times 40 to the fifth power, but 40 to the fifth over 50 to the fifth, the 10 to the fifths, there's 10 to the fifths in there, this is really five, time, uh, five times 10 all to the fifth, and four times 10 all to the fifth. So 40 to the fifth over 50 to the fifth actually reduces, sorry, re, uh, reduces to four to the fifth. So it's 20 times four to the fifth over five to the fifth. And at this point, there's, there's no real reason in trying to reduce this any further. I'm gonna plug this into, I think I plugged it into Wolfram Alpha, and I got a decimal approximation of this, which is 13.4 gallons. So we finally have an answer to the question, how much is in the tank after 10 minutes? This would be exact, and this would be the estimate. So the only thing maybe that you might have left to do is just thinking about, is this number reasonable or not? So we know we're dumping in two, we started with five gallons of alcohol in the tank. And we're dumping alcohol into the tank at a rate of uh, two gallons per 
minute, right? Two gallons per minute going out of the tank. Uh, sorry, coming into the tank. The, it was four gallons of four gallons per minute solution coming in. So two gallons per minute alcohol coming in. So I know that I'm going to gain 20 gallons of alcohol over the, the you know over the 10 minute period because two gallons times 10 is 20. So were nothing coming out of the tank at all, I'd have 25 gallons in the tank. So this number needs to be smaller than 25 for sure because we're losing alcohol out of the tank. You know, and a tenth, uh, a tenth of the, the tank was originally, a, ten, a, a tenth of the tank was originally um, alcohol. So we had five gallons, uh, five gallons in there initially so we're gonna lose a minimum we would lose at a minimum um, a tenth of a gallon per minute if we if we weren't mixing it well and and so if you think about that you know you know you're gonna lose at least another gallon so I, I feel good about I feel good about this number I would if I cal did this calculation and I got something bigger than 25, I would know for sure that I had made a mistake because we know we're losing alcohol out of the tank uh, over time. And in the end, the tank's going to be empty. I'm going to expect this number to decay to zero as time gets closer to 50. And indeed, if you put 50 in for 50 minutes, you see that the tank's going to be completely empty at that point. So you'll have no alcohol in the tank.